In this episode, I'm going to show you everything you need in order to connect your Python trading bot to Binance. There's a few things you need in order to complete this episode. The first thing is you need to have Python 3.10 installed. This is the version that I built this on, so I know that it works. You can try with earlier versions if you want, but I just can't guarantee your results. The second thing is you need to have a Binance account ready to go. I'll show you how to do things like get your API keys from Binance, but you do need to have the original account ready. I've linked these in the description, so Python and Binance, and just note that the Binance link I've provided is an affiliate link. So if you do click on it and use it, I will get a small kickback for it. Our first stop is creating a API key in order for our trading bot to work. To do that, go to your personal area in Binance and then head down to API management. There's a couple of different options there. I've chosen system generated. You want to label your key and I've creatively called mine YouTube. And just for all of those security people out there, I delete this key as soon as I've finished this uh, episode and use a different one just so there's no sort of breach of information. I've set up my account so that anytime I do something sensitive like this, I have to get an email code and I have to use my Google Authenticator code in order to complete the security challenge and continue. So you'll see here, I'm just waiting for this key to arrive and it's a pretty quick process. I'd really recommend that you take some time to review your security settings before this. The reality is you are traversing the internet in order to create these Binance API calls. So you really wanna make sure that your account is secure. Okay, now you'll see those boxes there, you know, stopping you from seeing the codes that I put in, but you'll also see that they uh, obstruct my secret key. And you're gonna get two keys when you create this successfully. You're gonna get an API key and an API secret. You really wanna make sure that you copy both of them, but particularly the secret run straight away. You won't get exposed to this again once you've created it. So copy them, put them somewhere safe. Okay, now, because we wanna be using our API key in order to do things like undertake trades, we have to add some extra security measures. And one of the ones that is mandated by Binance is putting in the IP address that you're going to use. I've put a nonsense one in there, which is the one your home router normally gives you, but that is purely just for demonstration purposes. Binance has a lot of great libraries covering pretty much all of the various major programming languages on the planet. All I'm doing here is showing you how to install the Python one, which is as simple as pip install Binance dash connector. So we need to be able to bring our sensitive information into our Python trading bot. And as you've probably already seen, there's a bit of sensitive information that we're probably going to have to deal with as well. The method that I use to do this is to use something called a settings.json file. And as you can see in the recording, there's already got some leftover elements from my previous series where I created a MetaTrader bot. I'm going to use the exact same method in here, except this time we're going to be specifying some Binance information. To do that, go to your settings.json file and update it with your API key and API secret, as I've shown there. We'll also add a third line, which is for our config.ini, something I'll cover in a moment. Now, you'll see in my particular file, I'm using my example underscore settings.json. That is because I don't want to expose my secret information on my YouTube video, but for the rest of my code, I'll be referring to settings.json. Binance has put a ton of effort into making sure that their API is useful and usable. And one of the ways they've done that is through the config parser. Now I'll cover how to use the config parser a little bit later on in this episode, but for now you need to create a config.ini file, which is simply a file with the following four lines in it. One, we declare that it's a config and then we declare our keys. The keys are gonna be the exact same keys that you used earlier, which is your API key and your API secret. There's quite a number of different ways of importing sensitive and secret information into a project. And I'm going to use something that's called a settings.json method. What this does is it uses the settings.json, which can be uh, located anywhere on your hard drive and imports the sensitive information 
into the memory space of your project. It means that at no point in time is your project hard coding any values and they're always going to be as secure as your endpoint actually is. And, you know, if you want to get into that discussion, that's a different one. So to do that, we're going to start by importing two libraries. And these are just really standard Python ones. The OS library, which makes sure that you can refer to various things uh, on your operating system. And then also the JSON library, which we'll talk about in a moment, but it's primarily because we're using a JSON file. Then we're going to define a variable, and that is where our settings file path is going to be. So that is basically the file path to get to your settings.json file. Like I said, you can put that anywhere on your hard drive, and then you just put that uh, location in that settings, <clears throat> settings variable. Then we're going to define a function, which effectively is going to import the settings.json file into our settings, and then turn it into a JSON uh, dictionary object, and then return that back to our main function. So to do that, start by defining the function, which is get underscore project underscore settings. Uh, very Pythonic in the fact that it tells you exactly what it's going to do. And it's going to take one parameter, which is the import file path. Now, as with all of our functions, we always start off by making sure that we comment our code effectively, uh, leaving little love letters for our future selves about what we've done and why we've done it to save ourselves time. Uh, and then we update our parameters and what we want to return. Now, I'm a huge fan of effective error handling uh, when it comes to your code. It just saves you time when you're trying to troubleshoot things. And when it comes to trading and you're using real money, man, it can save you tons of money by just catching silly little errors. And you'll see that throughout this series as we go in. A really simple test that we can do here is to make sure that the path that we've provided in our variable actually exists. Because if it doesn't, in reality, the rest of our code's not going to work. So we do that by using the os.path.exist test, which is a Boolean true if it does exist, false if it doesn't, and raising an import error if it does not exist. And, you know, six months time when you come back and you're looking at this and you put in the wrong file path, this is really going to help you to figure out where it's gone wrong. Now, if it does work, and so we branch off into the import file thing, the pattern I'm going to follow is this. First of all, I'm going to open the file. Then I'm going to read the information out of it. And then I'm going to close the file. And then I'm going to return the data. A lot of people won't actually put in the close. And most of the time, that's not really a problem. However, what you will see if you do this too frequently and your code is opening and closing files too much, you'll start to get these random file handle errors. And the reason is because the memory of your computer is running out of like references to this various file and you can end up with all sorts of like locks on the file because various processes are using it. You can avoid all of those problems by just making sure you put in this little line to f.close once you finish reading the contents of the file. And then we return the data. Now that we've got a function to import our settings into our project, let's actually bring that into our main function so that we can start to use it. To do that, we just simply update our main function, which is double underscore main double underscore, by importing the project settings, as you can see there. We create a variable called project underscore settings, again, Pythonic, which means obvious. Uh, and then we use the function we just created to bring those settings in. And just to prove that it works, I'm going to put a little print statement there to print my public key that I have deleted at the conclusion of making this video uh, to the screen. You can see there, it all works. We've done a ton of groundwork to get ready for starting to test our connection to Binance, which after all is the purpose of this entire episode. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a library or a pseudo library really for our Binance code creatively called Binance underscore lib. Now, for those of you who followed my previous episodes, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of libraries. They make your code super modular, super easy to update, and it means you can reuse it for whatever you want. 
So we're going to use our Binance library for all of the interactions that we might need uh, to undertake when we're talking to Binance. All right, so we're going to import two libraries uh, at the start of that, and they're the ones that I showed you how to do with the pip install earlier. So first of all, we want to import our Binance library, and then we want to import the config parser, and I'll talk about that uh, in a moment. Then initially, um, and in future episodes, we'll continue updating this file, but initially, we've got two functions that we need to do. First of all, we need to get our API key and our secret key working, and then we need to use that API key and secret key to test that our account has the permissions that we need in order to trade. So let's talk a little bit about the config parser as we get our API keys. Basically, long ago, like when I first started using Binance back in 2017, uh, you used to have to do a whole bunch of work to kind of get your HMAC signature working and all that kind of stuff. And actually, it was a little bit of a hassle. The config parser aims to take all of that work away from you. And all you need to do is give the config parser your API key and your secret key, and it will do all of the rest of the work for you, which is just so helpful. I can't even tell you. Um, I remember, you know, spending hours working through the HMAC stuff and it was just a mess. So all we're doing in our function here is passing it the location to our config.ini, which we set up earlier, and then returning the results uh, as it goes through the HMAC signature in this particular instance, uh, back to um, our, the rest of our function and our program so that we can use it as needed. Okay, so we start by instantiating the config parser. Okay, then we read the INI file into it, which we're going to use our project settings our dictionary to tell it where that location is. And then we return the API key and the API secret. Now that we can get our API key and our API secret key, we want to be able to retrieve something that kind of proves that the account is working. And ideally, we just want it to tell us if it's working or not. Well, a great little function that Binance includes in the API is this concept of the account status. And that'll just return normal if the account's working or something else if it's not. So we're going to test the API with our API key and API secret and see what comes back. If it's normal, we're going to continue. If it's not, then we're going to do something different. All right, so we're going to do this by creating a function that is check Binance working. This little function basically is going to test and tell us what's going on. You can see there me adding my comments, so telling us what the function is going to do and defining what we're going to be using for our parameters. And we really just want it to return a Boolean value. True if the account is working and false if it's not. Now, if you really want to, you could get a lot more complex here and start to throw custom errors. And I'd recommend if you want to you know, use your bot at scale that you do that. But for this particular series, all I'm doing is just demonstrating that it is possible to tell if your account is working. So first thing that we want to do in this particular function is to use our get API keys function to return our API key and API secret. Then we want to instantiate our spot client, which we imported right up the top there. And we're going to pass that client our API key and our API secret.
then we're just going to query the Binance API with our client to see what we get back. Now what I'll do here is I'll temporarily just print this to the screen just so that you can see what happens. Uh, and then we'll close off the function in a couple of seconds. So let's bring our little uh, library that we've just created into our main function in order to run it and see what happens. Okay, so we're going to start there by importing our Binance lib, lib that we've just created. Okay, now I just like to define that it's going to be a custom library. That's just where I put the custom libraries. Okay, and then we're going to go head back down into our main function and run the one that we just created. Now, because we're printing at the end of it rather than returning it, this is just going to print to the screen and we'll close that off in a moment. Okay, if we run it, we can see there we get the key from earlier and then we can see that what returns is data normal. So that account that I've created is working. Okay, we could probably say that we don't really need to print the key to the screen anymore. It doesn't really add any value. And we could probably also determine that rather than just printing whether or not it's working, we want it to return a value because if it's not true, we can do something about it. So what we can do is we can run a test on that little dictionary that was returned and see what it comes back with. If it's equal to normal, continue, and return true. If it isn't, return false. Like I said, you could go to the Binance documentation if you want to and handle all the other different statuses. That's totally up to you. Okay, so now it's running, but it's not really telling us what has started. So to hit do fix that, we'll go back to main and we'll update it to return the variable account once it's run that status check. Okay. 